Bad news tonight, attacks on tape. The FBI's recording from September 11th, never heard before, the sounds of terror and chaos as they happen. Saving the twins, the remarkable operation to separate babies who were joined at the head. Closing in, new reports that the evidence against Martha Stewart is growing. What's the bottom line? Invisible invasion, the West Nile virus claims another victim. What other deadly diseases could mosquitoes bring? We'll take a closer look. And threatened beauty, are national parks in peril, finding solutions to save themselves? Banning cars becomes a blessing. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in tonight, Charles Gibson. Good evening. Tonight, an extraordinary, newly uncovered audio tape, the sounds of 9-11. Just outside the Twin Towers that morning, an investigation was underway. One man was wearing a wire, a hidden tape recorder. What he recorded was hardly what he intended. The pictures of that day have such tremendous impact, so did the sounds. ABC's John Miller is joining us tonight. John? Well, Charlie, as we all well know, the attack on the Twin Towers was well documented on videotape, most of it taken from a great distance away. But now, through a very odd set of circumstances, an audio tape has emerged that chronicles the events at Ground Zero that morning. It is a chilling soundtrack. On September 11th, in an outdoor cafe nestled at the foot of the Twin Towers, two men sat down to have a chat. One of the men, Stephen McArdle, was a government informant wearing a hidden transmitter. The other man was a tax assessor who was allegedly taking bribes. But as they talk, the first plane hits. That was an explosion. That was an explosion. The tape was uncovered by New York Daily News reporter Greg Smith. He is wearing a transmitting device that is transmitting whatever he's hearing. Uh, back to the uh, FBI and when that happens he like everyone else just runs he was there when the second plane hit and you can hear the second plane is even louder it's it's uh, really a very frightening sound you also hear the voices of firefighters and the voices of cops he captures this, um, I don't know, it, it just bewilderment that people are feeling. Stephen McArdle and his target both survived. The two FBI agents who were monitoring McArdle's tape had to run for their lives, even as their recorder continued to pick up the sounds. What had started out as a wire on a routine corruption case had become an audio history of the ultimate crime. The FBI agents working the corruption probe were pulled right into the 9-11 investigation for months. The tape made by the government's informant Stephen McArdle was used as evidence in the case that resulted in the arrests of 18 New York City tax assessors in February. The man McArdle recorded that morning talking about bribes has since pled guilty. Charlie? All right, thanks very much, John Miller. Incidentally, New York City's plans to commemorate the one-year anniversary of 9-11 were announced today, seeking the simple and powerful there will be a reading of the names of the 2,800 killed. The readings to be led by former Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Officials in Louisiana said today that a fifth person there has died from the West Nile virus. 71 people in the state have been infected with the disease which is spreading across the country, the Deep South taking a hit from this virus that has only been in the country for three years. Here's ABC's Aaron Hayes. In Louisiana, they are spraying constantly trying to kill off the mosquitoes that are quickly spreading the virus. It's going to continue with significant increases on a week-by-week -week basis and, and will be probably at 200-plus uh, cases by the end of it. Doug Easterbrook was one of the first cases in June. All the joints in my body was hurting and I had a rash all over me. And he couldn't walk. He is recovering slowly. E.C. Hunt did not recover. Bitten, his family believes, at a July 4th picnic. By the time he was admitted to the hospital on July 12th, he was already running a very, very high fever. 
A diabetic, he was the type of person, elderly, with a weakened immune system that health officials in the affected states are most concerned about. We have to upscale our mosquito control programs in those states to be sure that we do everything possible to reduce human infections. The quandary? Some states' mosquito spraying budgets are already spent. Louisiana is seeking federal assistance. We're asking for uh, over $13 million. While most people bitten by infected mosquitoes won't ever become ill, the consequences for those who do can be quite serious. So health officials are urging people this summer to take extra care outdoors. Aaron Hayes, ABC News, Atlanta. And later in this broadcast, we'll take a closer look at the West Nile virus, what new epidemic might be next. On Wall Street today, the stock market changed direction yet again. After a three-day losing streak of almost 700 points, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up more than 230 points to close at 82.74. On the NASDAQ, stocks were up almost 54 points. Martha Stewart came under fire from congressional investigators today who gave the strongest indication so far that they don't believe her story. Stewart is under investigation for selling her shares of Imclone just before the stock crashed. Newspaper reports today indicate a key figure in the investigation is contradicting Stewart's story. ABC's Dan Harris looks at the bottom line. Martha Stewart may now be in much more serious legal jeopardy. Newspaper reports today say Douglas Fanuel, her stockbroker's assistant, is telling prosecutors that she is lying about why she sold her shares of biotech company Imclone one day before the stock tanked. Columbia Law Professor John Coffey says that could lead to charges such as making false statements or obstructing justice. There is a simple truth about white-collar offenders. They blunder again and again by destroying documents, obstructing justice, or telling false statements. More often than not, they wind up going to jail for what they did after the investigation began, not the original conduct that triggered the investigation. Stewart's legal problems have created business problems. This scandal has hurt ad sales in her magazine and retail sales of her products. It's a brand manager's nightmare, really. Stock analyst Laura Richardson says while the company's problems are partly the result of a weaker economy, it is tough to run a company built around one person when that one person may be in big trouble. Martha's personal situation that they are trying carefully to say is a personal issue separate from the company, you know, is having some impact on perceptions about the company as well. Richardson says the company does have strength and substance beyond Stewart. However, she acknowledges that it would be tough for the company to offer home decorating tips if the founder is in prison. Dan Harris, ABC News, New York. In the national briefing tonight, President Bush signed a powerful trade bill into law. The fast-track legislation gives him the ability to negotiate international deals Congress can approve or deny, but cannot change. Mr. Bush also announced a White House conference on the issue of child abduction, which he says has many parents worried, even though the actual rate of kidnappings by strangers has decreased. A growing wildfire near San Diego jumped a containment line and moved toward hundreds of homes today. The week-old fire has already destroyed 16 homes and burned more than 41,000 acres. It started when a drug enforcement helicopter clipped a high-voltage power line. And off the coast of North Carolina, we now have the pictures of Navy divers recovering the most famous part of the USS Monitor. The Civil War gunship's rotating turret changed naval warfare. It's now on its way to a museum where the ship will be restored. Overseas, the Treasury Secretary, Paul O'Neill, is in South America today visiting countries on the verge of economic collapse. He is in Argentina this evening after stops in Brazil and Uruguay. There is concern that an economic implosion in these important partners could start a domino effect in the Americas. Just how bad is it down there? ABC's Mike Lee reports from Buenos Aires. <laughs> Today in Argentina, the street dancers must tango twice as many hours just to earn enough to eat. Few people here have change to spare. But what people have in great supply is anger. At their government and at the banks. Estella Calderon was part of a vast and prosperous middle class. We need help. We need help. Now she's part of a vast new underclass. Millions of people who have money in bank accounts that have been frozen by the government. 
The only way to withdraw money is to convert it to bonds, but you only get 25 cents on the dollar. What has stunned so many Argentinians here in the capital is how quickly their comfortable lifestyle has fallen apart. Only a few months ago, Buenos Aires was known as the Paris of Latin America. For good reason. But their government spent much more than it collected in taxes. Argentina borrowed from international banks, but it couldn't keep up the payments. You have a lot of uncertainty on uh, what you will be able to do next week, for example. You don't know if there will be banks working or not. In this nation of 37 million people, almost everyone is strapped for cash. Thousands of people are selling their family treasures, watches, wedding rings. And they have invented their own currency, called a credito. It's sort of like play money and used to barter or trade for goods and services. Change is often given in pencils. So, for example, this laid-off sales executive trades her homemade baby clothes for 10 creditos. She gives three creditos to an out-of-work computer analyst for the pizzas he makes at home. Strictly speaking, none of this is legal, but it's one way for desperate people here to keep going as the South American money crisis deepens. Mike Lee, ABC News, Buenos Aires. Two other items in the overseas briefing tonight. FBI agents searched the site of the bombing at Hebrew University in Jerusalem to help investigate the attack that killed seven people last week, including five Americans. They're trying to identify which members of the group Hamas organized the bombing. In the capital of Indonesia, police fired water cannons into a crowd of protesters who are demanding democratic reforms. They're calling for army generals to be removed from Indonesia's parliament. When we come back, a medical miracle, a 20-hour surgery frees twin babies joined at the skull. Insects are carrying more deadly foreign diseases deeper into America. We'll take a closer look at the new and spreading dangers. And threatened beauty, new solutions for the problems that are crushing America's national parks. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by Total Cereals. Hi, grape nuts, please. You know, it takes four bowls of grape nuts to equal the B vitamins in just one bowl of Total. Four bowls. Dig in, Lumpy. Special K, please. Then it takes 16 bowls to equal the zinc in Total. 16 bowls. Eat up, sweetie. Shredded wheat? 40 bowls to equal the calcium in Total. 40 bowls. Chow down, big boy. You need Total. It's got a 100% daily value of 12 vitamins and minerals. No other cereal comes close. Total, please. Total, for total. Me. We're out of bowls. Total, Total Raisin Bran. What are you getting for breakfast? Plastic holds the promise of a better world. Taking medicine to new heights and giving our lives greater comfort. It puts the answers in our hands and hope in our hearts. Plastics make it possible. Body pain, oh. back pain. Introducing new Bare Back and Body. It's Bare Aspirin plus a special pain relief enhancer to relieve <sighs> sore backs and soothe aching muscles fast. <sighs> new Bare Back and Body. Get moving again pain free. When Ann and Mike began looking for their dream home, someone else was there to help make it a reality. While Ann took virtual tours on Realtor.com, someone was there to check comparable listings. While Mike was searching for their homeowner's policy, someone was there to preview houses as they came on the market. And when Ann and Mike found their dream, someone else was there to make sure it didn't slip away. Work with someone who worked with you. We're Realtors. Real estate is our life. Mom takes Metamucil. I never will. That's what you think. I found a better way to take my fiber. New Bene Fiber. Unlike Metamucil, it won't get thick and gritty. Tastes free, too. Mom can have her Metamucil. That's what you think. <laughs> New Bene Fiber makes taking fiber easier. Fighting pain's not the same after the Icy Hot Patch. I put it on, and the pain's gone. Oh! The Icy Hot Patch's concentrated relief goes on icy to dull the pain. Gets hot to relax it away for hours of relief. It's still working. The Icy Hot Patch. Pain has met its match. Could something you don't have in your body actually make you fat? Tomorrow, the stunning new discovery that helped one family shed hundreds of pounds on Good Morning America tomorrow. It is not often you will see dozens of doctors crying and cheering in an operating room. But that was the scene in Los Angeles after medical teams finished separating those conjoined twins. Until this morning, the two young girls had been joined at the head 
One of the twins had to go back into surgery this afternoon. She is out now. And as ABC's Judy Muller reports, there is elation that things have gone as well as they have. The twin sisters who were born with fused skulls were placed in separate beds today for the first time. Maria Teresa and Maria de Jesus were separated early this morning. By the end of the surgery, people were laughing, people were cheering, people were crying, and everyone had goosebumps on. It was an enormous challenge for the surgical team, some of whom were there the whole time, more than 20 hours, twice as long as expected. The most delicate part of the procedure actually involved going through one by one to each of the couple dozen blood vessels, identifying which blood vessel belongs to which baby. Surgical separation has been performed on twins joined at the head only five times in the last decade. This team took advantage of brand new imaging software that gave them a virtual roadmap to the terrain they would enter. When you're in a situation where time counts when you're on the table, the more you know about what you're looking at or what possible problems you could be running into, uh, the better off you are. When Maria Teresa was taken back into the operating room this morning to reduce swelling under the skull, it was a reminder that their condition is still very fragile. This is very complicated surgery, and until we get past several days, it'll be life-threatening for both of them. Even so, doctors are optimistic for the Guatemalan twins, Good news to the people back home who have been following the story closely. Pure joy. These little maritas, these little children are the children of Guatemala. The next few days will be critical, but these girls are already seeing their world from a whole new perspective. Judy Muller, ABC News, Los Angeles. A long way to go, but so far, so good. Amazing. Chick Hearn, the legendary play-by-play -play announcer for the Los Angeles Lakers, has died. He suffered a head injury during a fall Friday night, never recovered. During his four-decade career, Hearn made the term slam dunk and air ball common phrases. Paxton down the middle, Paxton all the way, lays it up. I love it. We loved him. He was 85 years old. Next on the broadcast, we'll take a closer look at the new menace of mosquitoes, the potential to carry diseases that make the West Nile virus look mild. To register for notification of breaking news throughout the day, visit the news alert page at abcnews.com. French roast. Chef Ming Tsai is attempting to name over 30 Millstone Premium coffees by taste alone. Espresso mezzo. Swiss chocolate. Almond. Cafe Midnight. Organic Aztec Star and sky. Millstone has so many exquisite coffees, from light and mild to dark and gold. There's one that's right for you. Colombian Supremo, with a hint of jelly donut. Millstone, taste what's out there. Goodbye, mop and pail. Hello, pledge. Grab it wet. This is wet. How easy is that? It's a lot easier than my mop and bucket. Don't have to get on my hands and knees. And they come out very wet. Grab it. Pledge Grab It Wet cleans, and you'll know it. You can see how much it's cleaning my floor. This is my new bucket, and this is my new mop. Pledge Grab It Wet. I like to know that it's clean. Look at how easily that spot came up. Because it's clean, I feel good. Pledge Grab It Wet floor wipes. S.C. Johnson, a family company. It can go in the garbage. Thinking about Nexium, today's purple pill? Good, but don't just think about Nexium. Talk to your doctor about it. Find out if Nexium is right for you. Nexium, it's today's purple pill. There's hot summer savings going on now at your hometown brand source store. Shop today and save on name brand appliances, electronics, home furnishings, and mattresses. There are hundreds of brand source stores across America for your shopping convenience. For the best service, selection, and value, go to the source. Brand Source. Get hot summer savings for a limited time at your area brand source store. Your neighborhood appliance, electronics, and home furnishings expert. When my doctor said Zocor was right for me, I stayed with it. Ask your doctor if Zocor could work for you. Zocor. Be there. Let's stay together. Morning, Joe. New haircut? No. New shoes? No. Hey, Joe. You been working out? Uh, no. Hey, Joe. You shaved your mustache? No. Nope. You sure that's not a new haircut? Yes. Did you just get back from vacation? No. Did you get a promotion? No. Did I? No. No. What's different? He finally asked his doctor about Viagra. Ready to ask your doctor about Viagra for the first time? Find out if a free sample is right for you. To learn more, visit Viagra.com. Ask your doctor yeah. and see the difference. <laughs>
Tomorrow, your favorite national monument may be in danger, but this time, the government may be to blame. The decisions that could change everything. Watch World News Tonight. Aaron Hayes reported earlier in this broadcast on the rapid spread of the West Nile virus. It arrived in this country but three years ago, and now this year alone has been found in animals and birds in 34 states, including four states where people got sick. It is carried by mosquitoes, and infectious disease experts worry if mosquitoes can so quickly spread West Nile, what other diseases might they carry and spread next? Here's ABC's John McKenzie with a closer look. They are already widespread in the U.S. Mosquitoes capable of carrying infectious diseases such as malaria, yellow fever, and dengue fever. The appearance of West Nile virus in, uh, uh, in New York City and its rapid spread, at least throughout the eastern United States, uh, certainly serves as a wake-up call. It demonstrates that pathogens like this are able to become established here and rapidly become major public health problems. And the risk of other mosquito-borne diseases emerging here is growing. The reason? Rising temperatures. They're producing milder winters and allowing infected mosquitoes to survive longer. Warmer temperatures also mean some mosquitoes bite more often and actually become more infectious. Under warmer conditions, the parasite inside mosquitoes develops much more rapidly, and so the mosquito becomes infectious more quickly very important for epidemic spread of disease. Increasing travel. More people today are traveling to and from many parts of Africa and South America, where yellow fever, dengue, and malaria are all on the rise, increasing the risk of carrying diseases into the U.S. Another problem, an inadequate public health system. The West Nile outbreak revealed serious lapses in mosquito surveillance. While the system has improved, there are no tests to rapidly recognize many of these other diseases. Before the spread of the West Nile virus in the U.S., diseases such as malaria and yellow fever were considered exotic or foreign, but not anymore. Now they and the mosquitoes that spread them are considered real threats to America's public health. John McKenzie, ABC News, New York. And you can find out what's happening in your state with West Nile virus at our website, abcnews.com. And later this evening on Nightline, how you can protect yourself. When we come back, the national parks in peril. One park's solution to overcrowding, make it harder to get to. Even with osteoarthritis, these arms still have a way with the ladies. Celebrate, celebrate. These legs hardly miss a beat. Celebrate. And these hands. Hands haven't lost their touch. Celebrate their Celebrex. Just one Celebrex lasts 24 hours and provides powerful arthritis pain relief that is non-narcotic. People with aspirin-sensitive asthma or allergic reactions due to aspirin or other arthritis medicines or certain drugs called sulfonamide should not take Celebrex. In rare cases, serious stomach problems such as bleeding can occur without warning. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems. Ask your doctor if prescription Celebrex is right for you. Celebrex, the number one doctor-prescribed arthritis brand. Who was the first American woman in space? Joseph. Everybody can use a little expert help with school. Do you have everything on this list? At our One Stop Back to School Center, our experts will help with everything on your list. And once again, Office Depot donates 5% of your purchase to the school of your choice. Need a lift? I'll take the shuttle. Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. This is the matchup we've been waiting for, the KG veteran versus the fast rising newcomer. I hear the way this rookie uses bill pay from Bank of America is really something. Look at the way the veteran stuffs that envelope, John. That is really old school. Well, the rookie's in total control out there. He's deciding what bills he wants to pay and when. Uh-oh. The money he's put aside to pay his bills is in one of his other accounts. Hold on. He's transferring money from his savings into his checking account right from his desktop. What a strategy! Mole 2. This summer's biggest secret is revealed. Who is the mole? 
The Mall 2 season finale tonight at 9, 8 central on ABC. Everything you are about to see really happened. Wednesday, this is where children's lives will be saved. I see you. ABC's World News Tonight, honored with nine Emmy nominations. No wonder more and more Americans are turning to ABC's World News Tonight. Finally tonight, when a wilderness area is designated as a national park, it becomes protected from many kinds of development. But it attracts many new visitors who can become a danger in their own right. This is a part of our series, Threatened Beauty. And ABC's Bill Redeker reports tonight from the oldest national park in Utah. Hiking through Utah's majestic Zion National Park can be a spiritual experience. I think that's the part that I love the most. The silence. It wasn't always so. Just two years ago, 2,000 cars and two dozen tour buses competed daily for only 400 parking places. So the Park Service did something it has never done before. It completely banned cars and replaced them with clean running propane shuttle buses. The difference is dramatic. Peace and quiet have replaced crowding, pollution, and the frustration of trying to find a place to park. Finally, Zion has lived up to the meaning of its name, sanctuary, or refuge. Welcome to uh, Zion National Park. At first, visitors complained they had lost their freedom, but scorn quickly turned to praise. Uh, I'm not here to see cars being parked, I'm here to see it in nature. And without cars, wildlife has returned. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the second day that the, uh, that the shuttle was in operation, a busload of visitors saw a cougar crossing the road. Startup costs were expensive, 29 million for the three dozen buses, visitor center, and parking lot. But day-to-day -day costs are paid for by park entry fees, Bye, and extra parking was donated by merchants in the adjacent town of Springdale. Zion is not alone in taking action against cars and overcrowding. Glacier National Park has reintroduced a fleet of tuned-up, environmentally friendly vintage touring buses. Yellowstone is considering a similar program. A light rail system is being built at the Grand Canyon, and a parking lot at Yosemite Falls will soon be torn up. It's created a whole new experience, says Jimmy Jones, a noted land...